meeting uh, might even incorporate it into the um, into the worship service at the end and so that will just take a moment so uh, please just keep your seats and then we'll uh, uh, continue with uh, uh, the benediction and uh, ending the service uh, and that uh, meeting is for the purpose of electing a deacon to the class uh, uh, board of deacons class of 2017 Uh, our adult study uh, will resume this, uh, this morning at 11.30 uh, in the library and uh, 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 we're
we're talking about uh, portraits of uh, Jesus in the Gospels. Also, um, uh, Carol Ramsberger has an announcement. Okay, and your bulletin ends for today. We've got like a double uh, announcement here. One is for this coming Thursday, the Women's Bible Study Group um, traditionally does a brunch cookie exchange, and so you can read the information there. If you would like to donate cookies to help out with the carolers and with giving cookies away to other people um, and can't be there, it's fine to bring cookies ahead of time and then put them in the freezer and label them uh, for the cookie exchange. Um, if you bake cookies, we ask everybody to bring two dozen and then an extra dozen or two and you can exchange those cookies. The brunch is going to be kind of a potluck brunch, and if you're interested in participating in that part of it too, that will start at 10 o'clock and just uh, talk to me after the service, and I can um, let you know what we have coming so far so we don't end up with all dessert things or something like that. Um, also, there's a um, misprint on here on Sunday, December 6th is the Advent function. Uh, we kind of used the same announcement last year, and the seventh is Monday, so don't come then. Uh, the Advent Luncheon is one of our big things all year, and um, we, after the worship service, we have a big lunch, and then uh, Santa comes, and we also have a craft workshop, and so we encourage everyone to plan, plan to attend that, and so it's five dollars per person, suggest a donation, and uh, be sure you kind of know the, the exact date. Okay, thank you, Carol. Also, um, well, just a, a reminder about the Advent Luncheon. It's a, a great time and a, a fun time in the life of our congregation. And um, there will be worship, food, uh, crafts, and a special guest who comes every time. Okay, John and then Mac uh, for uh, a couple more announcements. Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning! Thank you so much for helping to contribute to our shoe boxes. Um, for those of you who are not aware, what we have been doing the past uh, week or so has been collecting items in shoe boxes to send up to kids up in Bishop. Well, we've got a good collection of shoes in there right now. In the um, shoes. <laughs> we've, got shoes. You know, we've got a big collection of shoe boxes full of toys and toys themselves. And the youth are going to put them together after uh, church. Sorry, John. That's all good. So, yeah. So, um, that's great. Thank you very much. Also, we'll be going through the play practice today. So, or for play uh, rehearsal. So, youth and youth parents, be aware of that. There will be food for you. Hooray. Thank you. Okay, and then there's also a play rehearsal for children as well for the uh, Christmas pageant. And Mac Black has an announcement, I bet, from the deacons. Good morning. Merry Christmas. First, I want to thank everybody who donated for the holiday baskets for Thanksgiving. We gave out 23 of them, and the families were just so grateful. And we could not have done that without your support. But now we get to look forward to Christmas. So, and we're looking to give out 24 uh, Christmas baskets. They're about $40 each. So if you could afford to fund one your own, just put the money in one of the deacon's envelopes and write uh, Christmas baskets. That would be great. If you can't afford $40, whatever you can spare really helps out. And also to help fund it, uh, oh, on um, December the 13th is going to be a busy day. We are going to do a bake sale right after church. So bring Christmas, holiday theme things. Uh, we usually like to bring, like, uh, Billy always makes her lovely uh, croissants. You can throw them in the freezer, then break them out at Christmas. Or cookies, whatever you want for the bake sale. The deacons are also going to be selling, starting that day, uh, mistletoe. And we're going to, uh, $3 a bundle or two for $5. We're also breaking out the 75th anniversary cookbooks again. We will be selling these. If you haven't seen these things, they're wonderful. Just ask me or a deacon and we'll be selling those again. 
Also with the Christmas holiday baskets, uh, we give out gifts for all the children of the families. There will be a, a little Christmas tree right as you go in to the uh, social hall on the right on the 13th and there'll be a uh, tag with the sex of the child and the age of the child and also a sign up sheet. When you take off the tag, be sure to sign up the sign up sheet, put down your name and phone number so we know who's doing it. And that way every family not only has a Christmas um, meal, but the children have a press, at least one present. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mac. And uh, today we, uh, we uh, welcome uh, uh, members of uh, Elizabeth and Osmond Blandon's family uh, here for uh, the baptism of hope. With all of that said, let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. Watch and wait for Christ's coming, like candles of hope, peace, joy, and love, remembering the promises of God with prayer. Today we light this candle of hope. I will cause the righteous branch to spring up for David. He shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Let us pray. Thankful God, out of death you bring life. Renew us in hope that we may be alert to the burgeoning of Christ's advent among us. God of promise, God of hope, into our darkness come. John the Baptist told us to prepare the way of the Lord. So what are we all doing? We're cleaning our houses, putting up decorations, baking, shopping, attending parties. But these things don't prepare us for the coming of Christ, the Son of God. Let us prepare our hearts for the coming of the one who changed everything. Please join me in a prayer of confession. Shall we go our hands? God of the journey, waiting God, God of Advent, as we began to prepare our hearts to receive the one whom you are sending, forgive us for all of the times we have missed seeing you in our midst, for all of the times we have doubted your presence, and for all of the times we have failed to help others find their way. We are called to new birth, yet our feet and our spirits hesitate. Forgive our laziness. Forgive our fear. Forgive our selfishness. Forgive our comfort. As we wait for your Son, who will be our wonder-filled counselor, we also ask your forgiveness and our impatience let us take the time to behold your glory, steadfast and true. Open our hearts and let your peace enter them. And now in silence, let us seek direction as we begin our renewed journey to Bethlehem. Come, Lord Jesus, forgive us and restore us. Come, Lord Jesus, guide us and deliver us. Come, Lord Jesus, teach us and renew us. Come, Lord Jesus, amen. I did this wrong, but let's hear the words of assurance I got mixed up in my anxiety. Uh, the truth of Advent is this. God is coming to us. We are not alone. In Christ, we are accepted. We are set free of the past. We are given to the future. Let us celebrate God's grace.
and call to worship. I think it's totally opposite. Um, so I follow this along in our bulletin under call to worship. Advent is here. We are at the beginning and we wait. We wait for God who appears like a tender branch growing out of the sun. Advent is here. A new church year begins and we wait. We wait for God who comes with righteousness and justice. Advent is here. It is time to worship and we wait. We wait for worshiping the God who comes to fulfill promises. Let us worship God. In the days we are surely coming, <coughs> the days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteousness branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Um, what I've got up here are some walnuts, and uh, we're going to try to open up one of these, okay? And let's pop them down. I don't know how. I don't know how. <laughs> we're going to have, we have a nutcracker here, and I kind of was doing this in honor of the nutcracker ballet that was playing this weekend up here in the mountains. And we have some other nutcrackers. We've got this one. It's like we have them. Also, the kind that my dad used. <laughs> Sometimes our tree doesn't look like 
that are on the cards that look like the Charlie Brown tree. That's okay. Uh, we might not be able to find, or we might not get the perfect gift, but that's okay. Uh, we may not feel that perfect joy of Christmas every moment, but we'll have some special little moments, and all those combined, like the have some pieces, um, <coughs> make it okay and make like a wonderful celebration. So now that we have Advent, um, I'm gonna have you all take a nut home with you. We're all gonna take a nut to kind of remember that we kind of have a lot of anticipation and expectations this time of year. And we tend to work too hard and spend too much time trying to make everything perfect. Uh, the foods and the gifts and the traditions and everything like that. So sometimes things turn out just right, some more often they don't. So um, this is kind of a reminder, this package tells us that a mixture is really cool. Okay, it's, let's celebrate all the pieces of Advent and enjoy this combination of pieces that come together and that whole experience of preparing for the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Let's say a prayer. Father, we thank you that you accept us and we have perfect full and have an inch pieces. Uh, we appreciate that you gave us your son, you sent your son for us so that we know a little bit more about you. Help us to wait patiently in Advent and to seek joy in every little piece of the Christmas season. We ask this in your name. Amen. As we turn to the scriptures, let us turn to God in prayer. And using the words printed in the bulletin as the prayer for illumination, ask God's help in understanding. In the waiting and in the watching, Lord, we seek your ways. Strengthen our trust in you in this time of prayer, praise, and listening, so that we may notice you coming to us in the weeks ahead and may live out the good news you bring in the days ahead. Our scripture reading comes from the Gospel according to Luke. We, in the uh, lectionary cycle of readings, we begin a new gospel, and that is Luke's gospel. And the first Sunday in Advent each year, from one of either uh, Matthew, Mark, or Luke, we have uh, what's called an apocalyptic uh, text. Uh, it's a, a words of Jesus about his uh, coming again. And this state, uh, these words take place at the end of um, a longer series of verses about this. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth, distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard, so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that the day, and that day catch you unexpectedly, like a trap. For it will come upon all who live upon the face of the whole earth. <clears throat> Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength 
to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will endure forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Eternal God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Our rock and our redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> as a pastor, but much more as a person, a, a Christian person, I struggle with what to do with Advent. And I suspect you might not be sure what to do with it either. And Advent lectionary texts like today's from Luke can further intensify the quandary. We hear, there will be signs. Uh, people will faint with fear and foreboding. The Son of Man will come on a cloud. Look at the fig tree. Be on guard. It can all seem so strange and nonsensical to our 21st century ears. What do we do in the present with a future that is described in such foreign imagery and language? Some today extend, what some today do, is extend Advent from four weeks to a year-round observance, which in itself is not a bad idea and even likely what Jesus had in mind. But for many of those folks, the primary year-long practice is the interpretation of current world events to try to help figure out when Jesus is coming back. And while this might be a means of obedience to Jesus' words about being aware, uh, we could easily get caught in the trap of jumping to conclusions and claiming knowledge that is not ours to claim. What most of us tend to do with Christmas is quite different, uh, excuse me, with Advent is quite different. We tend to sweeten the strangeness of Advent with a little Christmas spice. We stand with our heads turned all around, looking at presents and decorations and lights and festivities and cookies and shopping and parties. Now, preparation for the coming birth of Christ, you know, being, one, being one of the uh, great themes of Advent, can of course be quite an appropriate activity for the season. It is an, an appropriate activity for the season. The problem is that the preparations themselves can become trappings. Off and on, our family has been looking for baby Jesus with our own heads tilted down and turning around because he has been missing from our nativity set. Well, yes, good news. It's the good news of Jesus or about Jesus. Carol found him at her mom's house in Duarte. <laughs> he was in the bottom of a cooler, stashed away in the front hall closet. <clears throat> There's just no telling where Jesus will turn up. That's why, that's why Jesus cautions us about being weighed down. Being weighed down by that which can cause us to be called off guard by his second coming. But what if Advent were a time with our heads turned upward? What if for us Advent, more than anything else, were lived standing with our heads up, expectantly watching and waiting for God. 
I think it would transform our lives, our relationships, our congregation, the community, even the world. Jesus says that the challenge to living with our heads up is that we can become weighed down. Weighed down, as he says, with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of life. And I think these three things are actually a reversed progression with the ways that we numb ourselves, that we, the ways we become sick, with numbing ourselves to the worries of life. And it can become a cycle in which we lose heart and hope and can be weighed down. So, how can we live standing with our heads up in expectation, with our hearts full of hope, watching and waiting for God? Well, let's consider those signs. Jesus speaks of signs in the realms of both nature and nations, and then he calls our attention to the fig tree and all the trees. But yet to, to us, it, he might say, look at the oaks. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves that summer is almost near. But Jesus lifts from among the trees the fig tree, which in, he, in the Hebrew prophets is a symbol of shalom, of peace and security and well-being and wholeness. It seems strange that the signs full of people's fainting with fear and foreboding let us know that shalom is near, that peace and well-being and safety are coming. But maybe that's a sign we need in our troubled world, that such signs of Christ ultimate return that, that they are used to talk about Jesus ultimate return or perhaps because it is in the trials and tribulations of life in the fear and the foreboding in the pain and the anguish and the deep sorrow that Jesus most dramatically comes to us so why does Jesus call us to a posture of living, standing with our heads up in expectation amid trials and stress and struggles in life? Because this is where we can most expectantly watch and wait for God. Because that is where Christ comes to us as if riding on a cloud. Because out of the pain and the struggle and even disaster of life, Jesus transforms hearts and communities and congregations and the world. You've seen it. Whenever there's been disaster that has struck a life or lives in prayer, and community support and love and compassion and giving that poured out. Advent nurtures in us a life that waits and watches for God, the God who comes to us in Jesus Christ and gives us hope. So how appropriate that Today, we baptize Hope Blandon, in which, who is born into a troubled world in which Christ comes to us over and over and over again. The Advent posture of our standing with heads up is the hope that God, even now, is remaking the world and remaking us. 
And so we wait and we watch for our risen returning Christ who comes in sorrow and pain as well as in the joys of life. Whatever the circumstances, in Christ we can stand and keep our heads up because, well, there's just no telling where Jesus might show up. This time I'd like to invite the, the Blandons to come forward. Here are, here are the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And lo, I am with you even to the end of the age. In baptism, God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death, uniting us with Jesus in his death and resurrection. And by water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, and joined to Christ's ministry of love, peace, hope, and justice. Pope Eloisa, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, we are her church family, and she is our family. We are united in, in Christ Jesus for a life that is love, and joy, and peace, forgiveness, and hope. <laughs> because of God's abundance, we have blessings to offer to others. Let us continue our worship as we share our tithes. but the joy of life in your presence here and now. We lift to you the concerns of our hearts, O oh God. We, uh, we pray for uh, 
Jimmy, Vicky, Gary, Gary. Um, we pray for Ruth Chastain and for uh, her family as well, and uh, Saeed Abedini. We pray for Jackie Williford, Cam Sutton, Ann Stanley, Tim Bloom, and so many others who are on our hearts and minds, like Jim Stream and Kathy Jehelka and Bill Jones and Elizabeth Marr. We thank you, O oh God, that you come into this world and in all the pain and sorrow and suffering and manifestations of, of, of evil and, and our own sin as well, we thank you that you come to us to transform and to make anew. And we thank you, O oh God, in that newness uh, for, for hope and for her baptism and her family and pray your blessing upon them this day and always. We pray, O oh God, for the families of Michael Bentley and Robert Prestigard and Lori Pearson and Don Valentine. And we pray that you will bless their tears and encourage their hearts and that you will indeed will be a presence that, it, that comes to them. Fill us with your grace and your mercy that we may live a heads up life expecting you to work anew over and over again with peace, love, and joy. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will sit at north and south, and they will come from north and south, and east and west, to sit at table in the kingdom of God. According to Luke, when our risen Lord sat at table with disciples, he took bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to them. And it was then that their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. This is the Lord's table, and our Savior invites all who trust in him to share in the feast he is prepared. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for your grace and love and mercy. We thank you for Christ Jesus, your dwelling with us in the flesh, your loving us enough to become one of us, your moving into the neighborhood of our lives that we may rejoice in your goodness, that we may, as the Psalms say, taste and see that you, the Lord, are good. Bless this meal with gratitude in our hearts and nourishment for faith and grace and joy, that you may be glorified all our days and into eternity. This we pray through Christ, who taught us to, to use these words when praying, to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus sat at table with disciples, and he took bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant poured out in my blood. Whenever you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. Christ calls us to this table, not as Presbyterians, but as Christians, as those who find their faith in him. It is for all God's people. So come and partake. We will partake uh, by method of intention. So starting at the back, uh, Rick will uh, invite each of you one at a time, well, kind of in a steady stream, to uh, come forward. And, uh, and then we'll work our way around this way. Um, there is gluten-free bread in the center of the plate. And uh, you may uh, now dip the bread or you may uh, take a cup from this tray. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. pray. Eternal God, bless this meal to our nourishment. We may be nourished in Christ and by Christ and through Christ. For a life lived to your glory and for the sake of this world that you love. For you come over and over again, even as we live between the two great comings of Christ. All this we pray, giving you thanks in his name. Amen. <laughs>
seated for just a couple of moments. Um, uh, let's open this congregational meeting uh, with a prayer. Eternal God, we continue in worship and praise and prayer, asking that you will bless uh, this uh, uh, work of your congregation, and we pray that you will uh, uh, bless us uh, with faithfulness and joy. In Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Uh, we have a, uh, a motion from the nominating committee, and uh, that is putting forth into uh, uh, forth, uh, nomination uh, Nancy Laughlin as a deacon for the deacon, Board of Deacons class of 2017. Uh, that is from a committee of the congregation and does not need a second. Um, at this time, uh, protocol says that we open the uh, floor to other nominations. Uh, we do not need any, but uh, we, um, the floor is open for them. So are there any nominations? Hearing none, is there a motion to uh, close uh, nominations? Second. Okay, we have uh, uh, first and second. And uh, those in favor of closing nomination say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Motion carries. And so now uh, we lift up um, that slate of, of one, of uh, Nancy Laughlin as a deacon for 2017 class. Uh, those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Motion carries. Congratulations, Nancy. And uh, let us pray. Gracious God, we lift up Nancy and we pray that you will bless her in her ministry as a deacon and all our officers as uh, and especially new officers as they approach uh, this new year of service. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. So go from this place with heads up, standing up, looking for the coming of Christ who comes to us has come to us and will come again. May the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. And let all God's children say, Amen. Amen. I'd like to invite the Blandon, uh, the Blandon family to, uh, to join me as we leave. And uh, peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. We're going to share that peace with one another.